how failures can shackle us to shame from the past or cripple us with anxiety about the future, robbing us of the present. This episode reveals how to overcome the shadows of shame and fear. Hi there. We are together again. I'm so grateful that you are journeying with me, exploring some of the ways that we can survive time of transition. It's actually raining today. You can see these mountain ranges, the fog is coming down. Actually, very much needed the rain. This place has been very dry. Everyone was hoping that it would rain. If I have a patch, suppose, I'm sitting under the shade and I'm not getting wet. And if there are grass here, and of course you know, that particular grass may not get the rain and it will dry. And as soon as it falls on these semi-dried places, it's been raining for a couple of days now, you can see how the color changes. You can see um, as if it was dirt, now it's like a lawn. Like a life comes out of it because it rained and it didn't try to umbrella it away, but it actually fell on the ground, fell on the grass, the grass received it, the rain and the grass came together and there is the new life and you can hear the sound. It's beautiful sound, isn't it? Rain sound, but we don't feel the rain not just because of the sound. If you want to feel the rain, we have to get into it. We have to get wet. And then like the grass, we will be transformed. Thinking about a shower, in looking at the picture of a shower, it won't really, really wash us clean. We have to jump into the shower, jump into the river, get wet. And then we will be all clean and fresh. And that's the thing with transformation as well. If we can think about, we can be informed about transformation. We can be learned from transformation. We can read books, help, talking to people. We can talk to anyone about transformation. But unless and until we immerse ourselves, unless and until I put my hand out into the rain and feel the raindrops, I won't see how it feels like, what it do to me, whether it makes me wet or whether I become cold. And that is the power of when we immerse ourselves, that's when transformation begins. That's the journey we are together. We are in our valley. We are going through our shame and experience of sin. We still kind of... Uh, kind of really lamenting what we lost because of our own mistake. Maybe we are in a prison. Maybe we are in a place of isolation. Maybe we are in a rehabilitation place. We're trying to be sober, but unless and until we accept and immerse ourselves in the reality of change and pain and shame, it's not going to transform us. It's not going to make us change the shape, which is the uh, meaning of the word transformare, which means to change shape. And as we know, if we want a glass furniture, some uh, maybe a globe, maybe a vase for putting the flower in, if we want something out of the glass, it has to go through the fire, not because, not to the side of the fire, not to be away from the fire or just to see the picture of fire, but we have to actually literally put that into the fire like an iron rod. If you want to make it flexible, we have to put it into the fire. I have to get wet in the rain to get fresh. 
to be viable and flexible, I have to be in the fire, immersing ourselves. And we discussed a few strategies, how to immerse ourselves in a time of transformation, or how to really survive the time of transformation. First one was to build an ark. Second one was to say no to change, but be vulnerable. Third one was to be our own best friend. And then the next one we discussed was to find a biblical narrative through which we can find meaning for the current situation of pain and shame and anger that we go through. In this episode, I would like to share with you a particular uh, strategy or a tip that helped me while I was going through my time of transformation and change. There was something I picked up from my therapist. One of the blessings of my time of valley, darkness and uncertainty that I was blessed with a rain, I would say, if I can use the image that is so present to us, blessed with a refreshing outpouring of a grace in a person. That was my therapist. She was a very practicing Christian, a practicing Catholic. And more than that, I believe she understood the gospel. And we need to find people like that, people who can really understand the gospel. And of course, we have discussed this gospel is that there is life, there is passion, there is death, but there is a resurrection and an anointed new life with the power of the Spirit. And she understood. And whenever I go and see her, without any delay, in every, se in every sessions we had, she would tell me one thing. When I say, oh, I'm a bit anxious, or I'm scared, I'm afraid, I feel very ashamed, you know, is there any hope for me? I had that time of tantrums and pain and wailing and lamenting and breast beating and self pitying I went through that. And all those times, she becomes this loud rain to me. She will, she'll just kind of shower upon me this particular wisdom. And the wisdom was this, Bonnie, Stay close to the reality. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, if I can use this my hand as something that is stable, like this is the floor, if you look at it, and this is my hand. So this is stable on my hand. If I leaning towards the front, I can lose my balance. If I leaning towards the back, Again, I can lose my balance. And this can happen to us in a time of change. Sometimes our tendency is to lean towards the front, which means leaning and being anxious about the future. What will happen to me? Am I going to survive? How would my 20 years look like ahead of me? Will I be uh, glorious like back in the first half or the first mountain? Or was like the, will I ever get the designing of my life back? Will I get the good name and the fame I had back? Will I be anxious about the future? Always leaning forward, we will lose balance because we are worried about the future. Or we, the other possibility or the other reality is leaning backward. That means always ashamed of the past. I should not have gone there. I should not have said that. I shouldn't have raised my hands. I shouldn't know, I shouldn't have a fall in that workplace. Oh, I shouldn't have talked to my employer like that. I should not have, I should not have. I, it's a kind of tendency to go back to the past and repair the past. I'm so ashamed. Oh, why did it happen to me? Maybe something happened in my family. My family is cursed from generation to generation. Nothing in my family works. And then I become shameful. I became self-pitying. And I kind of put myself down constantly, constantly. So these two, uh, two I experienced these two realities. Either I found myself a lot of the time thinking about the future and being really anxious. And my anxious anxiety was very, very physical. Sometimes I get this um, tired neck pain and sometimes my 
teeth get very sensitive. At times, I had even panic attack, thinking about the future. Like, really, my heart is pounding. I can't relax. I, whatever I do, I can't relax. My, my fingers go all kind of really wet and I become very fidgety. Like, really nervous sort of energy going through me. It is very physical for me. It was. And then sometimes very shameful. And when I am really shameful, what I experienced was sort of depressive time. Like I don't want to go out. I don't want to see anyone. I don't even want to eat. I just want to sleep. Or I'm just too tired. I don't want to get up from my couch. There is no motivation. So this is so this can happen to us. Either leaning backward or leaning forward. But what we want, what my psychologist or the therapist told me, Bonnie, always stay in the now. Stay close to the reality. There will be always these voices of fear taking me uh, to be anxious, taking me to the future and worrying about it. Oh, always the, fear, uh, the voices of shame taking me back to the past and making me feel um, I am worthless. So my self-esteem goes really down and I am not in the present moment. I escape the present moment. But my therapist always invited me, Bonnie, come to the rain, get wet. Don't run away from it thinking about a time of sun. Don't hide it, shutting yourself in a room. But come, it is raining. Experience the rain. Let it fall on you. Let it fall on your body, your face. Immerse in it and get transformed in it. And her mantra, what she taught me was, stay close to the reality. In other words, she asked me, don't leave the cross, Bonnie. Take it up. Pick it up. You know, there is a beautiful scene in the Passion of Christ movie. The Passion of Christ movie is like this. Jesus is given the cross. Jesus is given the cross. And in that movie, you can see Jesus literally take the cross. He embraced it. And there is a place I thought he was literally kissing the cross. In other words, is to really embrace the moment of change. Of course there is shame, of course there is anxiety, of course there is fear. But here I am, I am getting wet in this rain. Shame is with me, fear is with me, anger is with me. I am in the midst of it. If it is mud, I am in the midst of mud. If it is fire, I am in the deepest and the hottest part of the fire because I want to be transformed. I am staying close to the present moment. I am staying close to the reality. One of the strategies we can stay close to the reality is to look at certain examples. If we look at an example from Bible. One of my favorite Psalm is Psalm 51. And I think that is the Psalm for the valley. If you want a Psalm or a prayer for the time of change, it is Psalm 51. And Psalm 51 goes like this. It, it cannot get better than this to be staying close to the reality. It goes like this. Have mercy on me, God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now, why I say this is very close to the reality. David acknowledges two reality. The first reality he acknowledges, have mercy on me a sinner. So he acknowledges that I have committed a sin. I have mucked up. I have done something terrible I should not have done. I should have been careful. So he acknowledges the reality. Yes, I sinned. Then he acknowledges another reality. According to your steadfast love, deal with me, Lord. According to your abundant mercy, cleanse me, Lord. So he is acknowledging his own sin, but that doesn't change the steadfast love of God and then the abundant mercy of God. They are the reality. 
the steadfast love this abundant mercy there's no depend on my sin they are always there like the sun like the like the sun who never kind of even i can see the cloud now it is cloudy here does that mean sun just died the sun is behind the cloud sun is there i will see it so the reality is i am a sinner and i acknowledge that i am not saying i'm not trying to hide away from it or i'm going to over interpret it or i become so self pitying about it but i am a sinner i done that i should not have done but the other reality god is merciful god is loving and his love is steadfast now that is an example of staying very close to the reality and when we stay close to the reality what will happen we are accepting the change we are allowing the change and we feel the change we are in the midst of change in the book of ezekiel chapter 2 verse 9 there is beautiful reading there is a scroll in front of ezekiel and it is full of woes and lamentations and pain and it is been asked ezekiel take it and eat it and what does he do he eats it and what does he say it became sweet as honey a scroll of lamentation and pain he eats it and once he eats it it became sweet as honey in his mouth and that can happen to us initially the change the pain the shame the fear they kind of daunting us oh whoa, i can't do this i can't do this i cannot go through this change i better change my profession i i better change i i better divorce i better run away i better hide but if you really stay close to the reality and accept that we are a sinner i need to change and if we eat the realities if it becomes part of it eventually it will become sweet as honey now in order to stay close to the reality we can do two things the first one to ask this particular question which i even ask now the question is what is happening to me now so every time i had a shameful voice i wanted to i saw i saw someone from my first half of life from the first mount and who see me as a glorious priest i see him on the street my 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 tendency is to run away i don't want to face that person i don't want to talk to that person because maybe he or she will ask me something that kind of terrifies me or frightens me so i run then i ask myself bonnie what is happening to you then i said to myself i saw this person he makes me feel very insecure i am a bit ashamed i don't want to see i want to run that gives me control when i say that to myself that i am anxious that i am ashamed i am staying very close to what i feel i am not going to run into the past or worrying about the future but i am staying right here in the rain in the sun under the clouds i am staying right here right here and i have control on the present situation so in order to stay close to the reality if you're going through a time of tough time ask this question what is happening to me now and that question that question of now will put us straight into the here and the now not then and there not there and there but here and now another way of staying close to the reality is to write journals journals could be just writing about your day your feelings or oh, it could be even poems now what i found was when you go through a time of change and pain you know a bit depressed you're not in your full spirit when you are depressed you can express that was my experience when you are depressed you can express so my way of staying close to the reality was writing poems in my time of difficulty and every time i finish writing a poem i come to realize the gravity of my emotions that i felt i i came to realize how much i was scared how much i was ashamed so let me share with you these two poems that i wrote um i'm just looking at my poem i don't know them by heart 
the first poem I wrote when I was really, really anxious. I was sitting in a place and I couldn't even sit because I was that anxious. So I begin to write because it becomes so burdening to me, it has to come out. And this is what I wrote. I call it pendulum. My mind is like a pendulum. It goes to the left and think that's the best. Then to the middle, thinking where to next. Then it swings to the right, deeming it as good. Ah, it's back in the middle again for a rest. Swings to the pole, dumps to the center. In between, the lungs gas for life. Right or left or in the middle, swinging never ceases. Nonetheless, the time above me is ticking. It really spoke to myself. They are my own words, but it spoke to myself how anxious I was. I was almost like a restless pendulum to the left, to the right. Then I'm so tired, I come to the middle. Then I left to right, thinking about it. But when I finished writing it, I understood I'm anxious. So it helped me to stay close to the reality. Another poem I wrote was, it's called Pain. Can't find any rhythm in your punches. Can't measure the depth of your stings. Can't figure out the sneer of your face. Can't resist the force of your blows. Not sure when did you come. Not sure how long would you stay. Not sure which way you would exit. Stuffing the ears won't block your chatter. Shutting the eyes won't block your glaring. Smell of the roses won't cease your fetid odor. Seeping through them, you rule over all my senses. Imposing, exposing, bulldozing you reign. Fisting, resisting, desisting, I remain. Immersing into your fidgety presence, undergoing becomes my only exit. Those two lines, I'm talking about my own pain, the blow of the pain, the glare of the pain, the fist of the pain. And then towards the end, I wrote these two lines. I tried to fist you, resist you, desist you. But I realize my only way of exiting you pain is undergoing, staying close to the reality. My dear brothers and sisters, pain, change is painful. It isolates us. It makes us lonely. Transformation needs immersement. If this grass needs to change colors from dry to green, lush, it has to get wet. And we don't like wet ground. But in order to become healthy, it needs to immerse itself into the rain. We have to immerse ourselves into the reality, staying very close to the reality. And every time we have the tendency to hide and escape, we ask that question, what is happening to me now? Or we write, we are depressed. So I think there is a God-given capacity in our depression to express, express our feelings, express how down we are, how anxious we are, so that we can get in control of our situation. So I pray, like David, we will not be hiding, we will not watering it down our sin, but we will be very authentic. Yes, I sinned. But at the same time, the steadfastness of God's love, the abundance of His mercy doesn't rely, rely on my sin. It is always there. Mountains may depart, hills may be leveled, but my steadfast love will never change. Isaiah 54.10, we read. 
May you stay close to the reality. And may you receive the grace to stay close to the reality. Because God is right now, here and now, gazing at us, looking at us, immersing into our life. God bless you. I will see you in another episode of WOW. Until then, may God guard us and keep us safe. Amen. My life is a miracle. Every child has a story of God's love to share. Shalom world, tune into God's love story.